Happy Thursday and welcome to a much anticipated Husker Online headline show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, and we've got a lot to go through as we break down what we feel are five of the biggest headlines of the week. And this is one of those weeks where um, there's no short, no, it was pretty easy, Steve Sipple, to come up with the five headlines. Yeah, it seems like a lot to talk about. Um, <laughs> but yeah, before Let's we get, get into it, before we get into headline one, um, make sure you, if you haven't been on Husker Online, uh, we've had great coverage, great uh, specials going on right now for our YouTube listeners. You can get two months of access for $1 by simply using promo code NU1 at HuskerOnline.com. And let me tell you, we've had some great breaking coverage from our national team all week. Well worth it. Try us out for two months for $1. Promo code NU1. All right, simple. Let's get into headline <clears throat> one. Mm -hmm. There's been a severe shift in the quarterback discussion for Nebraska and I know you like my analogies sometimes and how I kind of play things out <laughs> and I'm going to use a wedding analogy. Okay. To describe. Okay. I know. Is this safe? This is, it's is a this safe, safe for work. Okay. Um, so Kyle McCord, I mean, imagine the wedding, the courtship, okay. he's in town for the rehearsal dinner, everything, okay. everything looks green or ready to roll. Okay. But then all of a sudden a girl, a girl that was kind of way out of your league mm -hmm. that you've always desired yeah. comes back into play and says, not only am I interested in you, I want to marry you. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of just disrupted the whole kind of thought of where this was going to go. I think Monday, Tuesday, the thought was, all right, Kyle <laughs> all right. McCord, Daniel Kalen, maybe Chubba stays, Heinrich Harburg, you got that figured out. Then it shifted. All right, can they make this work with Kyle McCord for one year? Dylan Riola can right. use the four-game red shirt, develop, learn. You might lose Chubba Purdy in this. Uh, Daniel Kalen, and we'll get in that later, is possibly looking at some options. Um, but clearly, that was a pie in the sky dream. Well, yeah, no, hold by on. Some. Yeah, no, you're right. It's it, this is where the discussion gets really good because, yeah, there's a temptation to say, Sean, it's just too good to be true to have two five star quarterbacks. In They've the never center. had one in history in Nebraska, right? So it's just there's a temptation. And I think I even tweeted that. It's just too good to be true. I wish I wouldn't have. It's not. It wasn't too good to be true. You could do it. The, the, the situation was there. A lot of people thought it could be done. Right. I thought it could be done. Um, and it's unique. It's a unique situation. Yeah. If, I mean, if I, was, if I was looking at another school and Purdue was going to have two five-star quarterbacks, I'd say, oh, no, that's, that, that's not going to work. But this could have worked because one's a legacy. Um, so that makes it unique, you know, Dylan rails, a legacy, um, and one and one is a incoming freshman Dylan. And the other is a, would be one, a one and done guy in Kyle McCord. So it would kind of work. You could say, yeah, Kyle will be the bridge kind of to Dylan Rayola and, and that, that could work. And Dylan's a legacy. So he's, in, he'll stay in play. So I thought this is perfect. But you know what, Sean? Where well, there's humans and there's a lot of money, there can be a lot of drama and imperfection. And that's what we got. Not all, yeah, and it's you – know, and you think about, like, in the NFL, like Peyton Manning as a rookie, you know, you, you don't want to throw him – like, you want to get a, a guy ahead of him to kind of develop, like what the Chiefs did with Patrick yeah. Mahomes. Like, Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. was better than Alex Smith, but they let him kind of get his sea legs in yeah. the organization uh -huh. and – you know, there, there's a lot of scenarios like Arch Manning at Texas. I mean, he, he redshirted this year, played mm -hmm. in a few games behind Quinn Ewers. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the, yeah, yeah, th yeah, that scenario was very plausible and it was play, it could have played out. And I, I think a lot of people thought it was a great idea. Clearly, and you know, I can see the McCords side of things too. If this played out this way, they come into town Monday expecting the wedding. They came Monday. They were they were ready to roll. I mean, I think this was. Kind of all right. They're coming in, get this thing figured out, and move forward with Nebraska. As they get to Lincoln on Monday, the Dylan Riola bombshell just drops. drops. Right, and imagine. I mean, it was like I couldn't leave. I, I, everyone in the state was talking about it everywhere. Yeah, pretty much. Um. So yeah, that all happened on Monday. And what do you think if you're the McCords? Now, here's other th part of this conversation that you, we really you know, as journalists have to be careful of, and that is making a lot of assumptions, you know, and, and essentially trying to speak for the McCords. 
Um, I don't know what would, went through their minds. It's possible that their decision, and McCords have decided to move on from Nebraska. At least as of now. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we, yeah was, we report. I mean, Pete Nakos reported that yesterday. It's possible it didn't have much to do with Rayola. But that seems unlikely. I mean, it seems like it would have. But but again, I hate – this is why I really have – it's hard. These situations are hard for us because people want answers, Sean. But we have to say, rule. Matt Rule's not going to tell us what's going on. He can't. He can't tell us what's going technically, on. technically, he can't even be involved in NIL. Right. Technically. Exactly. And, and Kyle McCord or – his dad, Derek McCord, they're not going to bear their souls to the Nebraska media. You know, why would they? And I, I talked to Pete Nakos throughout the day yesterday on Wednesday, as we were kind of working on this together. And, you mm-hmm. know, I think what, and he, he's speaking to people within the camp of McCord within the camp Um, in the camp is agents and other people, mm-hmm. not just his family, but people agents are, are very re- critical in this conversation. And the agents and Pete Nakos is really, risen in this NIL coverage world because of his relationships with all the key players. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, I, I think the thought was if, if Kyle McCord throws a pick or struggles at all early, there's going to be an immediate cry. There it is to turn the page and go to Darrell. Would and, they be comfortable with that? Of and, course not. Would you, if you, if, if you were his father, I wouldn't, he's an 11 and one starter with one year of eligibility. And I think he wants a clear path. Yeah. And yeah, Which is hard go, to guarantee anybody. Just go back to that. Go back to that scenario. That that would have been the scenario if McCord, if McCord wins that job, and Rayola is standing on the sideline. By the way, making maybe a million dollars too. So that's a whole other part of the conversation. You'd have two million dollar quarterbacks, one standing there, and then McCord. If and, and there's bound to be struggle, right? I mean, Kyle McCord's not going to go through the season at Nebraska with the way Nebraska is right now and have some, just have a, have a season where he throws 40 touchdown passes and three interceptions. It's not going to be like that. So there was, there was bound to be some struggle and you know, what would have happened? You know, what would have happened the first time he encounters, you know, he throws a couple picks. Oh, it got, it would have got, it would have got weird. And maybe they didn't want that, you know, and I can't, if that's the case, I can't blame him. And now for McCord, you wonder because nothing has really emerged with who's next. But um, Pete no, Nagos reported teams that are still in the market for a quarterback are Auburn, Duke, Louisville. And I think Louisville would be a logical spot for him. It sure would. I mean, Jeff Brom is a quarterback whisperer. It sure would. It would. Um, I mean, he's made guys with far less tools. It's funny you said that because when I was looking at that same story and we were going through those schools, that's the one that jumped out to me is Louisville. I, I've watched Jeff well, Brom and you know, what he's done, and if that was an option, I'm sure McCord's going to look at and, who else. Uh, Syracuse and Michigan. Syracuse is the one with the most steam. Now you you threw out Washington. Well, That's only just a thought, but do the yeah. Huskies already have a young guy in the wing? I don't know. I mean, I threw out Washington because Michael Penix, pure pocket passer. I mean, they don't they they run an offense where you can have a pure pocket guy like McCord McCord. If you look at, I probably have looked at a hundred plays of McCord. There's I don't, you never see him run. He doesn't run. He's no, I think he had passer. like eight design runs all year. And that, that would include like quarterback sneaks. Right. And Penix, there was that, that stat of Penix that he only threw 11% of his passes outside the pocket. So that Washington offense would fit McCord, but I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. That'll be very interesting in the next few days to see where he goes. McCord. And when McCord, I mean, we, if you just take a few steps back with Nebraska's liabilities the last few years on the O-line, would a guy that is essentially Mm -hmm. stationary in the pocket, Mm -hmm. could that have worked? Yeah, I think it could. Could could they have protected him at a level that needs to be for a guy like that? I mean, it seems like it's – I mean, it's – no, I mean, you won't find many perfect situations in that regard, but man, you got Teddy Prohaska on one side as a, as a left tackle and B- Bryce Benhart on the right. Yeah. Returning. Yeah. I mean, ben no. Scott returning. Right. But I'm talking about the tackles. You got Prohaska on one side, Benhart on the other. That's pretty good. You think you'd feel pretty good about that. Pretty good. Not, again, you're, you're not going to find many places like Michigan and Ohio State up front, but Nebraska was, I thought they were all right that way. McCord is like a throwback that we were joking. I mean, he's like a 1993 Michigan quarterback. 
Elvis Gerbach. Yeah, we, we used Elvis Gerbach on the phone call last yeah, night. He's like that. I mean, he's, but he's Lloyd I, Carr would have been all over this guy. I mean, like he would. And th there aren't a lot of guys like Kyle McCord in college football anymore because the college football game has turned into a QB run game. You're right. But I liked him. I like no, I like the I like the film of him. He has a you know he's got a strong arm and he makes good decisions. He's he's depend he's beyond he's dependable plus he's beyond dependable. He was dependable with the ball. The reason he won part of the reason he won that job at Ohio State is because in the competition with Devin Brown, who's a sophomore, highly recruited kid, obviously, Brown turned it over more. I mean, and and McCord didn't have problems with turnovers. God, that I mean, you'd think Nebraska fans when they hear that would go, God, a, a quarterback who doesn't have problems with turnovers. He won the Ohio State job because he didn't have problems with turnovers. Yeah, that's what we need here. That's what you need here, dependability. And I think for Nebraska fans, this is just another thing tugging at their emotions. Oh, God, I can't and, imagine. You know, we get blamed because we, we painted – Are people blaming us? Well, they – For what? That we painted such a rosy picture that McCord was coming. It was rosy. It was, I mean, he was in town for the wedding he pretty was, much. He was in town for two days. Yes, Monday and Tuesday. He didn't come here just to go to Misty's and get a run zone. No, it wasn't. No, he came here to sign. That's what he did. I mean, it was sign the papers, make a million. All right. Now, I, I don't know. I got to be careful. I, I don't want to be irresponsible with tossing around money, but get paid. He, he, yeah, he was going to make a lot of money. And that's another part of this discussion that's critical. And I hope people got to get used to this. I'm still getting used to it especially when you're – and I'm not talking about every position, but when you're talking about premium positions and quarterback being the main one, the money part is really big in these discussions. It's really important. It's business. It's business. All right. I man. mean, they came here to do business, okay? So we'll talk more about it. All right, before we get to headline number two, thank you for joining us here on Husker Online Headlines. Uh, we're brought to you by Omaha Steaks. And let me tell you – there is no better gift to give somebody than a box of Omaha steaks. Who does not want a box of filet mignons or ribeyes delivered right to your door? And we've got a great special right now. Not only is Omaha steaks offering 50% off site wide on many of their top level boxes, Husker Online, we're going to throw you another $30 off that box. Uh, there is an order minimum required, Look at that um, red steak. but you will get $30 off by simply using promo code Husker um, to get that box of Omaha steaks delivered. And, you know, they, they get, they ship it to you in a cooler. It's got dry. eye. I mean, he's, I had a box delivered to my house and the, these steaks are rock solid. I mean, they're frozen. You solid had a box delivered to your house. Oh yeah. We, we, we cooked up some of the steaks and, my wife's like, where are these from? I go, Omaha Steaks. I mean, they, they were the real God, You live deal. a good life, Sean. <laughs> but uh, I go to Outback. $30. Off. For the record, Steve Simple, you don't cook. <laughs> I've known you over 20 years. I've never seen you throw a piece of meat on a grill. Oh, I grill. Don't. Uh, yeah, come on, I grill. Like once a year, maybe? A couple. Okay. Yeah. If I sent you a box of Omaha Steaks, you'd figure it out. I sure would. Are you? I figure it out, Sean. I know how to grill. It's not a. I don't have to figure anything out. All right. Well, thirty dollars off promo code Husker to take advantage of that. Already fifty percent off on a lot of boxes. We're throwing another thirty dollars off with that great promo code Husker at OmahaSteaks.com. Thanks to Omaha Steaks for sponsoring us here on the Husker Online Show. All right. Headline number two is Riola a lock? I, I, I think that is Oof. the question Oof. now on your mind because of the way <clears throat> things turned with McCord. I don't want to use use the word blew up, but they turned with McCord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is, is Israel a lock? I don't think uh, I'd like to think so. I mean, Ohio State thought he was a lock. Georgia thought he was a lock. You know, not Buford, or not Buford, uh, I'm sure uh, Chandler, Chandler and Pinnacle thought he was, I mean, so I don't just, know. You just don't know with, with this situation, but what we know now is Dylan Riola and the key word is expected to be on an official visit in Lincoln this weekend expected yeah. and that was reported by Hayes Fawcett mm -hmm. who has broken a lot of the Dylan Raiola news with his edits that he puts out at on three um you know over the course of the recruiting process so um will yeah. Dylan Raiola be in Lincoln I think if he's in Lincoln that's a very good sign that he's going to be a Husker yeah I mean and I think there's some people that are going to say you know you guys did a show earlier in the week and I might even have said I'm 90 percent sure he'll be a Husker 
The reason I'm a little more hesitant right now, Sean, is because the the tumult of this week has just been tumultuous. And I'm now I'm a little more guarded on everything. This stuff is really, really sensitive. Sensitive. And again, I will in, I will inject the money part into this discussion. The money. So there's money at Georgia. There's money at Nebraska. I don't know. I don't know what is, I don't, you got to see what's changed in the world of college football. And it's and it's profound for you, too, because you're older. Um, nobody's as old as me, but you're old, you've been around a long time. It, we have to adjust to this world, especially at quarterback, especially at quarterback, especially with high profile quarterbacks where money is a factor, a major factor in these discussions. I mean, these quarterbacks make more than Tony White and Marcus Satterfield are going to make. Isn't that? Yeah. Think about it like that. Yep. Yeah. But, but, and it's like the pros. Way gonna... more than the assistants. I mean, yeah, I mean, Gary, Donovan, Donovan just got Donovan Rayola just got a raise to 500 grand. Hell, his his nephew's going to make three times more than him. I mean, here McGuire makes like 280. Right. These guys are going to make way more than those guys. Probably. Probably. Again, now rule of Matt rule. Sorry, Matt, if you're watching this, we're throwing around a lot of money. Um, but well, come on, the dollar amount he threw out. Though. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's what I'd tell you to Matt. I mean, you're the one who said a million, million, five, two million for the top quarterbacks. And I regard McCord as a million dollar quarterback, not a two, one starter. Yeah, not a two million dollar quarterback. Make the distinction a million dollar quarterback. And and Dylan, he's worth a lot of money. I mean, the blowback, though, of the McCord story <laughs> yesterday at all. Get in the mind of the rivals. I mean, the, this like to see kind of like what kind of what are you talking well, about? Well, just it felt like people were upset yesterday. That McCord, not everybody. Not I mean I, now, Sean. Don't you think that if if it ends up with Rayola, now this yeah. yeah now this is where I don't I, this is where I I I don't understand. I mean, I don't have a feel for the fan base right now. I'm asking the question, and I'm not in leading you into anything. Wouldn't I? I just. I guess not what I'm saying is wouldn't most people be happy with if it turns out to be Dylan Ray on? They will. I mean, the thing about the game, though, is true freshmen right now in this new college football that we're in that has sixth and seventh year seniors now in it. <laughs> it's, it's it's really hard. <laughs> you got to kick out of that, right? <laughs> no, um, I didn't kick out. You made a great, you, made, you made such a good point that you're right. Like, yeah. how many true freshman <laughs> quarterbacks stood, yeah. stood, stood out this year? Right. And, I mean, and it's, it's difficult. You're going, it's basically pro football. Right. And I think people probably have a sense of this now. And I think you share this sentiment with me. I was excited about McCord. And a lot of the reason was what you just said, because it is a grown man's game right now. And he's a grown man. I mean, we talked to somebody close to McCord or that was on, the, you know, at Ohio state. And they're like, just, no emotion, no, not too high, not just a professional. And I don't want to make it sound like he's perfect. He's not. He's not a perfect quarterback. He, what was he in the on three rankings? He was seventh the last I checked. He's a five star. Yeah, he's a five star. But but here's the thing about him: he won a game at Notre Dame with a clutch pass at Notre Dame in a game Notre, Ohio State had to win. He he went into the game. The game, the game in Ann Arbor, the game, the game that I will not miss, that I put above the Super Bowl of events that I want to see, Michigan, Ohio State, and and acquitted himself well. He he, he could handle this, and I was a lot. I was a I I became excited about the prospect of McCord. So yeah, I mean I don't mind saying it. So I was a little let down yesterday. I I, I thought that makes a lot of sense to have McCord here. You know? He's a stabilizing veteran. Yeah, in a veteran league. In a veteran this is league. It's not a, a cute story kids league. No, it's not. And, and Dylan Ooh. Raiola has exceptional talent, but you are putting a lot on a young player Yeah, to play in this league now. A with lot. 18 teams with multi million dollar oh. coaching staff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, now, I thought it would work perfect. A bridge. McCord's the bridge. And Dylan learns. Gets in four games, makes a million, then hits his. Then it's his deal. Then it's his job. You know, work. I just thought, perfect. And if he's a little bit of a threat to McCord, that's fine too. If he and, if he comes out and if he comes out in the spring in August and he's guns a blazing, okay. And that might be where the McCords are uncomfortable with it. Like, I, we're not saying. Like, I don't know that. You know, where the, the just the thought of the Riola, you know, shadow over them. Yeah, that's why they're left Ohio State. Right. I mean. There, there were shadows over him there to take the job. From him. This, this, when you, when we look back on this, and we will, 
for many years. The timing is what makes it interesting. The timing of the way it all unfolded. McCourt's coming to campus on Monday to meet with NIL, meet with the coaches, et cetera. Ooh, the Rayola news hits the same time. So just started leaking over the weekend. It's just the timing is inc- remarkable well, when you think Dylan about it. Dylan Rayola is in contact and speaking with players on the Nebraska team, you know, and telling guys essentially that he's coming home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very, it's very. So now we'll it's, see. I mean, it's exciting though. Like, like, look, like it is exciting. Said, if they get Rayola, oh my gosh, like it, it, it's a big deal. But the path here has been very interesting. If that's what it works out, it's been a very interesting path. You know, the path went through Ohio State first, then it went to Georgia, and Burles in Texas. Yeah, and then Lake Arizona. Yeah, and then for Georgia. Yeah, and then it's been a winding path. And man, if they can lock him in this weekend, that would be remarkable. All right, before we take it to headline number three, thank you for watching Husker Online Headlines. Husker Online Headlines is brought to you by nuts.com. And let me tell you, uh, we've got a big basket of nuts.com right behind Steve Sipple. Um, <laughs> and he tears into that thing every day when he comes up here. Like a coyote. Uh, because it, it's great stuff. I mean, they, they have not just nuts, but tons of other snack items, um, dried fruit, sweets, pantry staples. Uh, you name it. They even have coffee, things that you can order on their website. Uh, but it is a no better time for gifts, for your house, for your office. Um, and, and the pricing, you, you look at the prices, you're like, wow, this is really good pricing for a lot of different things they're offering. And we've got a great deal as well at nuts.com for Husker Online listeners. Go to nuts.com slash Husker and spend $29 or more. You'll get free shipping and a free gift will be given with you as well. That's nuts.com slash Husker. It's been $29. You'll get free shipping and a free gift. Thanks again to nuts.com. And I did get some feedback. We've had a lot of our Husker line really? viewers going to nuts.com and using that promo code. So we appreciate that because it helps the show, helps us out here too as well. Um, but we're giving you a great deal here with the, the free shipping and the free gift at nuts.com slash husker sean you know what what dawns on me is people can just come and watch our show and christmas shop simultaneously steaks nuts yeah just get your christmas shopping done as you watch the show it seems like a good multitasking situation right yeah it's um i that's not i'm telling and i i've made my own orders like they, they, oh, i guarantee you have they've I'm sent a surprised. little bit at the beginning but we've made our i've made two additional orders at not because the product's that good it's really worth checking out all right headline number three daniel kaland is oh, set to visit michigan state this weekend and that's another layer to this riola story huge layer um you know i i think kaland with the mccord angle that was going to be fine. You know, I don't think Kalen ever thought he was going to come in and win the job as a freshman. He'd come learn, develop a guy like McCord. Once again, another great scenario for a guy like Kalen. Um, well, the, the Rayola angle comes into play as another 2024 quarterback. And you think about Daniel Kalen and his recruiting journey. He has basically had to play second fiddle to Dylan Rayola <clears throat> since the beginning. Go back to 2021, June. 2021, June at Memorial Stadium. So, Kalen already had his offer mm-hmm. and didn't have to, he didn't, he didn't take part in the camp from the frost, from the frost regime. Yeah. From, from Mario, Mario Verdusco. Yeah. That, that same month, the Riolas hit the recruiting scene <laughs> and they were getting offers from Georgia. They're getting offers from everywhere. They went everywhere. He threw, he got an offer. He comes to Nebraska, puts on this, this miraculous quarterback workout for frost. Uh, Rayola. Uh, uh, Rayola does right. for Mario Verdusco. And in the background of that workout, I, I posted that picture this week on my Twitter. You have all the Husker coaches working with Riola, and Kalen's just standing there in the backdrop watching it, like alone. It's a, yeah, it's a hard, it's almost a hard photo to look at. And and that that's been his recruiting story with Riola, um, where it's perfect. Immediately, he has always been kind of like the backup. Right. Well, Riola picks Georgia. Rail, uh, Kalen had to commit to Missouri, though. He could not wait around. Um, mm-hmm. Those that advised Kalen, and I, I don't blame them, like, don't wait on Riley. So this was May. 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 Like, you can't wait. So Kalen committed to Missouri, like, in March. Okay. And, you know, had great 
connection. So he was there for, I mean, he had been commit. Kalen had been committed to Missouri for a couple months and then it all changed because of Rayola going to Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Going to Georgia. And I'll, I'll, I always remember may it was Danny, Daniel Kalen was kind of the safety net for Matt rule, Matt rule. I remember very vividly writing these stories and talking to Huffman, coach Huffman, the Bellevue West coach. And, and it was, it was very striking to me how honest rule was with Daniel Kalen. He told him, Sean, I mean, you know what our situation is. We want Rayola, but if, but if that doesn't work out, we'll come right to you. That's what happened and within a week. He flipped. Yeah. And, and, and then he became the biggest piece mm-hmm. to recruiting in this class. Gosh, he helped them get Carter Nelson. Yeah. He helped them get De- Devon Hall and Isaiah McMorris. Um, everything they needed for this recruiting class, Daniel Kalen was a part of it. He came to town, he drove up. I mean, he worked his butt off to help Matt Rule recruit this class. So unbelievable. If you can imagine, it's got to have been a tough week. What a story this is. It is remarkable um, what's going on. So in the meantime, Michigan State, who has had three of their quarterbacks go in the transfer portal um, when Jonathan Smith took over, Two of them have already found landing spots. Um, Levitt's going to – Sam Levitt's going to uh, – Arizona State. Noah Kim's going to Coastal Carolina. So they got two of their three going places already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hauser, Caton Hauser still not decided. Now, Michigan State was in Omaha this week at Bellevue, their offensive coordinator. Now, Michigan State plans to take a transfer, and which is the Oregon State guy. He's going there. And then they're going to take two – they want to take two high school things. So it's not like Kalen's walking into a sure thing if he goes to Michigan State either. He's going to be one of three. Yeah, he's so, in a tough situation. Is he better off just staying with Nebraska and kind of letting this thing – and there, there's that picture of uh, the camp uh, from 2021. Yeah, look at Frosty. They're talking to talk, – now, Frost is sitting there talking to Dylan. Um, and there's Mario and uh, the former offensive coordinator here. Help me with the name. Lubick. Yeah, Lubick. Um <clears throat> yeah, and there's – and there's gosh, look at that. There you go. There you go. Now, Kalen's basically in the background again, you know. So, this is this is remarkable, and it all has happened very quickly, just within four days, five days. Yeah, severe, severe change to the conversation. And it's very close to signing day. Uh, Daniel <laughs> Kalen is going to graduate early. He wants to enroll early somewhere. I mean – this is a kid that's dreamed of being a Husker. So it, it, I can't imagine the stress that he and his family are under right now as they sift through this process because they they had it all figured out. He mm-hmm. was the key guy of this recruiting well, Think about the month of May and all the stories we were doing on Kalen. He went to the Elite 11. Made the Elite 11. Made Elite 11. Um, it was a big, big story for, for everybody around here, the media. I mean, he – got his spot with Nebraska. It didn't happen as cleanly as he wanted, but Matt Rule is up front with him, and boom, May was a big month for him. And then, yeah, it's all – that's why I keep using the word tumultuous. Think about how tumultuous it has been for him this week. Now, his relationship with people over at Nebraska, I think, still is strong. But if you can imagine, I mean, I think the Raiola angle has changed things a lot because yeah. it's, it's kind of like – I'll use this example. It's like Joe Burrow as a three-star – Going to Ohio State, okay. kind of the Ohio player of the year. But mm-hmm. Urban Meyer kept bringing in five stars like C.J. Stroud and Jordan yeah. Haskins and yeah. you know J.T. Barrett. And uh-huh. they, all these guys there where Joe Burrow just always kind of got overlooked because of the five stars on that Ohio State roster. Mm-hmm. And they never could give him an assurance. So that's when Joe Burrow and your radio co-host Bill Bush mm-hmm. you know, figured out the plan to get an LSU. And right. it changed the history of college football. It did. It did. The best quarterback ever to play at Ohio State never played for Ohio State, mm-hmm. like, and won a national title and put up the best. So, you know, in some ways, like you can imagine, and I'm, opt- I mean, I still think there's a decent chance this could work out with Kalen, and, and he remains committed to Nebraska. Yeah, I, I think there's a chance it could all, because the the beauty is the transfer portal is there, mm-hmm. like he does it. But if you don't have film and other things out there, you become less attractive. Mm-hmm after this year <laughs> like you know if you go on the portal i mean look at richard torres he had to go from nebraska to what incarnate word i don't even know where the hell he is uh, yeah but, so, somewhere like that point I mean, well taken sean right logan smothers right jacksonville state right not this, even a starter this is an amazing world it, it, i mean the 
it's precarious for quarterbacks. The, the volatility at that position is here to stay. Not every year at every place, but, man, it's volatile. Whew. Think about the volatility we've seen here. And then Casey Thompson's in town, of all things. I mean, like, he was in town this week. Yeah, there's so much of that you deal with this time of year. Um, just people kind of, like, connect the dot detective to de detective work going on. Nothing to it. Um, no, I mean, he's in the directory because, I mean, a lot of people are still in the directory. Right. Hell, I might be in the directory. He he was in town, from my understanding, to see some friends. Right. And, you know. Yeah, see some friends. <laughs> see some friends. It's not, he's not, they're not looking at Casey to come back as a 26-year-old guy. Wouldn't be able to participate in spring practice because he had knee surgery, major knee surgery in October. So no spring practice, 26 years old. What what are we talking about? I don't. I have no idea. I don't think we're talking about anything is what it comes well, down to. I mean, there's been a lot of like other people throw out things like Princely Uman Yellen. Nothing has happened with him in Nebraska. He's going to go in the SEC somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's the brother of Prince Well Uman Yellen. On the but by the same token, you just can't dismiss everything. No, you can't dismiss everything. Um, but there's a lot of the connect the dot detective stuff out there yep. that people, you know, you, you you're hopeful you want it to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, who wouldn't want Prince Lee Uman Yellen at Nebraska? We right. don't want ETN at Nebraska. But those weren't real. They, they were never real. Um, McCord was real. McCord was here. He was here. Yeah, he was here. I know a guy at Nebraska who rode the elevator with him and his family the other day. It was real. It was real. All right. Um, before we get into headline number four, thank you for joining us on Husker Online Headlines. Uh, we're also brought to you by Home Field Apparel. And we've been talking about Christmas gifts. No better place to get your friend, your your dad, your aunt, your uncle, whoever, uh, your son, your daughter, um, some Husker gear, or yourself at Home Field Apparel. It's a premium collegiate apparel brand based in Indianapolis. They emphasize their commitment to creating incredibly comfortable, officially licensed apparel with vintage college designs. Uh, they're super unique designs, and they delve in the archives of history of each school. They use the unique logos, mascots, iconic moments um, to create thoughtfully designed apparel I'll be honest. I was looking at their sip. They they even like I'm I'm not gonna buy Colorado gear, but they had like a Colorado 1990 Orange Bowl shirt. Wow, this is kind of big news that you're looking at Colorado gear. Well, I, I think it came up first because it was alphabetical order. I'm like, God, you can get like a 1990 Orange Bowl shirt. It's kind of neat. Yeah, that, that perils. Once again, do your Christmas shopping here. You can get those. I thought those sea salt nuts looked really good. Those chocolate covered sea salt nuts. Get some of those with some steaks and some of this apparel. All You're right. Pretty so much set up. Homefieldapparel.com. Check it out. And we got a deal 15% off for Husker Online listeners by simply using promo code Huskers23. That's homefieldapparel.com. Promo code Huskers23. You'll get 15% off your order. Um, so get your Christmas gifts, um, some really, really cool items there, volleyball items, basketball items, football items, uh, you name it, at homefieldapparel.com. Thank you again to Homefield for sponsoring us on the Husker Online Show. Headline number four, Julian Fleming, Demond Demas, and the wide receiver discussion, uh, because you look at this roster, Steve Sipple, right now with no portal commitments, Gun to your head. Who's the number one receiver on this football team? Oh, I mean. Third and eight, who are you going to? Right now, Malachi Coleman. Malachi Coleman. And do you feel comfortable with that? Well, he's he's coming off shoulder he had surgery. Eight, yeah, he coming off shoulder surgery. He had eight catches last year. He had eight catches. I'm Second would be Damon da uh, Jaden Doss. Jaylen, Alex Bullock's in there. Yeah, I'd put Jalen Lloyd probably. I mean, Jalen Lloyd made huge plays. Now, is Marcus Washington and Isaiah Garcia Castaneda going to return? That's big. We That's, don't know. We don't well, know. Okay, so here, let's just set the stage. We don't know if Julian Fleming's coming or not. He was here. Yes, he was. He, he visited too. And I need to set the record straight. I think there's this notion that him and Kyle McCord were some sort of package deal. They're not a package deal. They're two guys that are grown men former five-star recruits mm -hmm. that both happen to have visits in Nebraska on the same week. Mm -hmm. um, but clearly it's a business decision. Like mm -hmm. if it makes sense and I can say this, Nebraska, we know has money. They have money to give. They're not taking that many transfers this year. So mm -hmm. uh, they're in IL collective. Yeah. Can so be very aggressive with a guy like Julian Fleming. So yeah. Why are we talking about Julian Fleming? Six, two, two, 10. I think he had 80 catches at, at Ohio state over, over three seasons or four seasons. 
um, six, like I say, six two two ten grown man would probably be Nebraska's number one receiver. That's I mean, he wasn't he was number four probably. You'd say three or four at Ohio State, and he was kind of sharing a role with Carnell Tate, a big time recruit from Chicago, which maybe explains why why he's in the portal. Who knows why he's in the portal? But he was here. There he is. Um, he would be great. See, I thought. I, th- I think he would be great if they can still get him because, again, he's a man and he's a, he's got a ton of experience. Think of all the tricks of the trade he learned at Ohio State, which maybe is the top receiver school in America, playing with the, all the Marvin Harrison and, and Buka. Um, and now he brings all that knowledge. Guys like Smith and Jigba. Yeah, now he brings out all that knowledge and wisdom to a room that's pretty young. I mean, we're talking about – I mean, three true freshmen that played late last year in Jaden Doss, Malachi Coleman, and Jalen Lloyd. Alex Booker was only a sophomore. Um, now you're going to bring in – I mean, you're bringing in young receivers to true freshmen that are moving up. Man, he I just think he'd be perfect right now. Well, the perfect. defense is so good in the Big Ten. Huh. Like, you don't just get open very often. Like, you have to run good routes. You have to sell – you have to know, like, as you said, the tricks of the trade. Yep. Um, third and eight against Iowa. You're not going to get wide open. No, but think yeah, think about how much Julian Fleming knows about oppo- opposing defenses in this league. He knows a lot. He's seen film for 4 years. Um and and he, and he I what I keep stress stressing about McCord and Fleming is they played in this premier program and they had to work their way up. Um Fleming came in as a five-star recruit and played pretty much immediately, but McCord had to wait Right, um, CJ Stroud. Yeah, had to wait and wait, and that finally got his chance. These guys had to battle, battle every day. What do you think it's like battling every day at Ohio State? Every day is a test. They then they bring that to Lincoln. That that would only be good, and it would be particularly good for the receiver room. He turns twenty three on December nineteenth. Julian Fleming turns twenty three years old on December nineteenth. So he's almost as old as the coach. Um, this is a grown man. It's not a 19 year old kid. It's not a 21 year old kid. It's a 23 year old kid um, that's played a lot of football at Ohio State. Well, and, and then the other storyline that's emerged is Demond Demas, the, yeah. the five star Texas A&M receiver that's at Garden City Community College in Kansas. Now he was dismissed um, at Garden City for an assault charge. Um, and, and he's kind of worked his way, or I'm sorry, it's at Texas A&M, which Texas got him to Garden City. He was a five-star in high school, a big-time recruit in Houston. Big body. Um, and yeah, I met him. We met him on the satellite camp yeah. this summer. You'd say tall. Is he? Would you call him big body? Am like 6'2"-ish. I, I mean, he's yeah. lengthy, yeah. Um, long-armed, um, very athletic. I mean, it, he's the kind of guy that does backflips and cartwheels on the field. I mean, very, very – Five-star. You know, bouncy. Yeah, a lot yeah, of, yeah. I mean, he, a lot of bounce. Now, what really got the connect the dot detectives going this week is on his Instagram page. He 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 calls himself pass catcher at the University of Nebraska. He tweeted out a corn cob as well on Boy. Wednesday night. Boy. So, if you're in the Boy. connected dot detective world uh-huh. to get excited about things, uh-huh. that's going to get you ex- inter- or interested. Yeah. Well, I, I talked to Demond. I've talked to Demond multiple times since I met him in June at the camp. And, mm. And he said, yeah, there's definitely some some things going on, but nothing that he would be willing to confirm right now. And I don't know what to make of that because I've talked to a lot of other people involved, you know, with, you know, good insight to the program. And this caught some folks by surprise. So there's definitely other people within the program kind of trying to get things worked out because, look, they need some receivers. Yeah, I mean – I always try to do this. I say this to you. You got to put yourself in the shoes of these guys at Nebraska, these coaches and the support staff whose livelihoods are dependent on bringing in talent. I mean, it's not just, I mean, we, I mean, big time talent. Think about what's going on, please. Washington, Oregon, USC, UCLA are coming into the league this year. <laughs> this is, it's, it's go time. This is a tough league now. I mean, it's a tough league right now. But man, it's got tougher. It's gonna get, get it's gonna get tougher. Oregon comes in ready, ready. Have you watched Oregon lately? They're a Big Ten team right now, and Washington beat them twice this year. Oregon, Oregon is a rugged physical team. It's gonna be, 
Yeah, you got to get dudes now. As you said, cute stories. I don't do it anymore. They never do it, really. But but we've kind of settled. Why I keep saying that is it feels like in the last, mm, I'd say, seven to ten years, we've settled into this sort of acceptance of, uh, you know. It's a good story. They're, they're all right. That's a, yeah. Yeah. Like, just like this acceptance of we don't have any first team all big 10 players, but that's okay. We have a couple third team guys. No, not okay. You're not going to, yeah. If you want to finish 500, that's probably okay, but you got to start putting first teamers on there and you got to have a couple all Americans every year, or you're not going to compete for anything. You know what you'll be Sean and think about it. How big is the league now? 18, teams. 18 teams. You want to be ninth, eighth. If you're, if, if you're going to be one, two, three, four, you have to have all Americans multiple. You better have a couple and top three round draft picks. Yeah, and and all and and several all Big Ten players, or at least three or four. Now, Demas, you know, there's there's a lot there. Number one, what's his academic situation? Can he get out in January and get somewhere? Would Nebraska have a spot for him, or would this have to be kind of a, you know, NIL type thing? I don't know because they, they are limited on some spots. That's a good question. And there's you know, and 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 there's the legal situation that he had before. And it's I, a major situation. And, and I'm not going to get into it. No, we don't need to. Uh, but you can research it. I mean, yeah. there, there's a lot there to to go through. And 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 Nebraska. And you know, Matt Rule has. I mean, he's got a former Charlotte police detective on his coaching staff, mm-hmm. like that helps him. Mm-hmm. You know, so they've got people up there that can check into these situations, mm-hmm. but that, that is something you gotta, I mean, it, look like there's a lot to this story and what we can say now is there's definitely something to watch with the Mondemus, but nothing that we could move forward as an official report. And what do you think about Fleming is does Nebraska, what do you think their chances are with Fleming? Do you have I, a read I, on a re- I mean, I wish I could put a percentage on it. See, we haven't seen Fleming. Has Fleming visited anywhere else? No, but does he? Okay, my thing I'll say is this. Does he need to make a decision this week? You know, he's not. These transfers. Now, Demas is bound to signing day. Okay. Like the, okay. the, the, the next Wednesday to okay. Friday, he's got that, that signing day window. He's got to sign by if he wants to get somewhere in January. Okay. Transfer portal guys, they only need to worry about January 22nd. The first day of classes at Nebraska. Okay. So theoretically, could a guy like Fleming hold out until January 3rd through 7th, take visits again still, uh-huh. and kind of have more options? And we know some other teams like Penn State and Kentucky's of the world. There's been some other teams involved with Fleming. Okay. And so just to just to build on what you said, when you say he has until January 2nd, the first day of classes, that's January be- 22nd. Yeah, I'm sorry. January January 22nd, the first day of classes, is because they a transfer portal player's commitment doesn't become binding until they either go to class or they participate in some sort of workout. Yeah, organized workout, official organized workout. Activity. Yeah, organized activity. So, yeah, even if Fleming were to commit to Nebraska right now, it's not binding until until he goes to class or participates heard, in an like, activity. Alabama, what they'll do on these transfer portal guys is literally when they get to town, they they call a meeting mm-hmm. and then they just do kind of like a informal walk, walk, walk through workout. Yeah. Makes sense. And then they're in. They're in. You that makes work. sense. Like, that's what I do. Like, all right. Yeah, hey, before that's... you even move into your place. Right. C- come over the stadium. We're going to do a quick thing. We're going to film it. Um, and yeah, this is what we're going to do. We'll, we'll do a little walk through, catch a few passes and you're in. So, yeah, we'll see where that goes with Fleming and Demas, but um, huge, huge, huge pieces because that wide receiver room still needs some some steak. They still need some Omaha steak. They need. They do. All right, let's take it to headline number five. Um, before we get to that, though, once again, you're watching Husker Online headlines. Make sure you take advantage of this great special at Husker Online right now. Get two months of access for one dollar by simply using promo code NU1. Like, follow, subscribe to our page. By the way, Steve Simple, we broke 40,000 subscribers to the Husker Online YouTube page. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> Considering a year ago, we were probably 25. So, I mean, it's pretty good. It's, it's, um, the following and support of the channel has been unbelievable. And obviously, yeah. the following of our website as well, um, continues to grow. So, check us out, huskerline.com, promo code NU1, headline number five, tracking other quarterbacks in the transfer portal. 
And let's get into that. Yeah, get in that. Pull it up on your screen over um, there. A lot of people want to know what's going on with the other top names in the quarter in the portal. So Cam Ward is our number one quarterback right now in the portal. And, you know, I think we don't know where he's going. Did he commit to Miami? I don't know. What's it say on your screen there, Sparky? Well, it says 100 percent to Miami. Ah, uh, he's, ta- he's taking an official visit to Miami. OK, um, but no, um, I don't, not done yet. I don't think it's done yet with Cam Ward. Um, but no, Florida State could still be in the picture with Cam Ward. I thought Ohio State would be a good spot for him. Look, it looks like, it doesn't sound like they're in it. And then you've got Dante Moore, the UCLA quarterback, still undecided. He's the number two quarterback in the portal. Still and, out there. Um, Michigan State's listed as a team with him, as well as Miami. It's up in the air. Will Howard, the K State quarterback, he's kind of a mystery. Like yep. nothing has really moved. And there's some thought that Will Howard's still kind of what playing the NFL market too. Oh, okay. like that he could end up going pro. Now Dylan Gabriel, the former Central Florida quarterback that went to Oklahoma is now at Oregon. So yeah, he's locked in at Oregon. He's committed. Okay, now that is real quick, Sean, real quick, real quick. That's an example of NIL. Because wouldn't you say, why would he leave Oklahoma? Why? He was a starter. They Phil were pretty Knight. good. <laughs> yeah, Nike money. He's probably got he, – and Oregon's going to play this game where they'll, they'll – if they're a little deficient at quarterback, you know where they're going to find it? They're going to find it in the portal. Because they can pay a lot of money to that quarterback. Now, Aiden Childs um, is the Oregon State quarterback, and he is looking at Michigan State right now. Nothing decided. Okay. Riley Leonard, who is the Duke quarterback, he'll go to Notre Dame. So Notre Dame. The second year in a row, we'll see the Irish poach another ACC quarterback to be their starter because mm-hmm. they had the Wake Forest guy uh-huh. this past year. Yes. Um, can't Sam, say Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think that's right. So no, Sam. No. Uh, just we know who he is. He's the bearded guy, sculpted. The ladies love him. And here's the deal: these coaches, and I saw the interview with the Wake for or the the Wake Forest coach, just say, "Look, we developed that guy. Get his name, please. We developed that guy, and Notre Dame came and got him. We put in the work to get him to Sam Wake. Sam Hartman. Sam Hartman. We put into work." to get Sam Hartman. It is no small thing, Sean, to a school like Wake Forest or a school like Duke for these schools to come in and swoop up the guy they developed. And and Matt Rule has talked about that. He doesn't like it. So, so think about Wake Forest. Think about Duke, all the work they put into those guys. And now they've reached the, probably their the, when they're going to be their very best. And here comes Notre Dame to grab them. Wonderful. It's like marrying a girl, and all of a sudden, like she gets prettier and becomes like a supermodel. Then right. people just say, "You shouldn't be married to her anymore." I'm taking your wife. Yeah, because and then here comes the money. Here comes the money. That's that's the lot. That's why analogy today. Yeah, you really like that. Man. Kyle McCord. Um, no new teams, as we've talked about with him. Now Brock Vandergriff, who is a five-star Georgia quarterback, he is committed to Kentucky. Okay. Um, and you know, he'll be the starter probably at Kentucky because he's looking at Carson Beck at Georgia being the guy one more year. He would have had to sit, he would have had to sit, probably didn't want to do that. Miami's Tyler Van Dyke is going to go to Wisconsin. Interesting, big, strong kid, throws a lot of picks, <laughs> uh, but he's a big, strong kid. And two years in a row, the Badgers will have a transfer portal guy. Yep, uh, Chandler Rogers from North Texas, he'll go to Cal. Okay, um, Max Brosmer. From New Hampshire. Okay. He is a four star portal quarterback that will mm-hmm. be at Minnesota. I think that's a good pickup. Grayson McCall. Yep. From Coastal Carolina. Locked in. He'll go to North Carolina State. Locked in. So, like, the names are flying off the board quickly. Uh, Max Johnson, the AM quarterback, he's mm-hmm. going to North Carolina. Okay. He'll play for Mac Brown. Okay. Uh, Tyler Show or Shaw, um, Texas Tech quarterback, he'll be at Louisville. Okay, and then you have Blake Shapen, uh, Blake Shapen, the Baylor quarterback who won a Big Twelve championship. He is going to Mississippi State. Right. Um, Taylon Green, Boise State's quarterback, he will be at Arkansas. Okay, interesting. Brendan Soresby from Indiana, mm-hmm. he's going to Cincinnati. Okay, um, so it, it's really remarkable. This one gets your attention. MJ Morris, who was formerly a Nebraska target under Scott Frost. Mm-hmm. He's going to leave NC State to go to Maryland. Okay. And he's a good player, MJ yeah. Morris. But 
he's way down the line of ranked portal guys. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it just it tells you how many good quarterbacks went into the portal this year. Mm-hmm. Ohio's quarterback, Curtis Rourke, who's one of the best quarterbacks in the MAC, um, he's looking at Vanderbilt and BYU. Mm-hmm. Sam Levitt, who, by the way, is ranked 66th, I believe, or 292 overall um, in our on three portal rankings. He's going to Arizona State, and that was mm-hmm. a guy Nebraska didn't meet with. So he did meet with um, him. He met, Nebraska met with Shapen, Levitt, Ward, uh, Will Howard, and McCord that we know of. Now, the overall like transfer portal rankings, Cam Ward is the number two overall player. The top guy, according to On3, is Walter Nolan, mm-hmm. the defensive lineman from AM. He's a five star high school, five star portal guy. Um, Old Miss and Oregon are both battling to get him. Um, Prince Lee Umanyelin, the brother of Prince Well Umanyelin, is the number three guy in the portal. He's number three overall. And um, he's looked to be a lock right now to Mississippi. Okay. So it, quarterbacks dominate the portal rankings. Um, you know, ETN, the running back from Florida, is the top running back, mm-hmm. and he is a, considered to be a lean to Georgia right now. Okay, it's fun. It, it is kind of. I mean, I urge you go to the transfer portal page for on three because it's really easy to sort through and and look at all these guys on there, and and they have a position tab, and you just kind of go through. And mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of activity, a lot of activity. Yeah. Well, there's 1,500 plus guys in the portal. Yeah. So, but yeah. So there you go, Sean. A lot of movement. A lot All of right. Movement. Well, and a lot of tumult at Nebraska. I'm going to, I hope people don't think I'm being overly dramatic. This was a dramatic week. Um, and I'm going to use, I'm going to use the word tumult. You know, now and now, let's see how it shakes out this weekend with Dylan Rayola. Big weekend, though. Uh, not only will we have a Sunday column from Steve Sipple. But yeah. we got Husker volleyball in Tampa. Oh yeah, oh, Abby yeah. Barmore's down there, and we didn't talk about it because of the shelf life. They play tonight on Thursday. This show has a shelf life that runs through Friday and Saturday. Uh, but Abby's going to have great coverage from Tampa, uh, so check out her work. Nebraska basketball will play uh, Sunday at Kansas State, big one in Bramlage Arena, big one. They've been off all week. Robin's going to Manhattan for that. Okay. So we'll have coverage of that game. Okay. Um, and then volleyball will be Sunday as well. So the volleyball game, if they win against Pitt, will be head to head essentially with the basketball game. The basketball game is on ESPN plus. Okay. Yeah. And then the Rayola potential visit. Yeah. Other than that, get your Christmas shopping done. Right. So let's, we'll get out. We'll have our ducks in an order um, and have good coverage. We'll have so, good coverage. Thanks again uh, for joining us on Husker Online Headlines. We love doing this show. We love the support, the viewership, and uh, we will be back again as news breaks. Uh, check out HuskerOnline.com again for that great special. Promo code NU1 gets you two months of access for $1. For Steve Sipple, I'm Sean Callahan, signing off for another edition of Husker Online Headlines.